in physics, momentum is when an object is in motion, um, it is harder or easier to arrest that motion based on two factors, its mass and its velocity or speed. Um, and the idea is that the higher the mass or the velocity, the more that the motion will carry itself in that object. In behavior, there's an analogous theory uh, that behavior itself carries momentum. Rather than mass and velocity, however, the two factors uh, that they describe in behavioral momentum theory are frequency and past history of reinforcement. So the idea is that a behavior, if it has a high past history of reinforcement or a high frequency of occurring, uh, that it will be more difficult to bring that behavior to a stop and to redirect it into something else. Um, it can also be applied in a positive sense of teaching a, a new skill or redirecting into a, a more difficult task where we use that high frequency and that high level of reinforcement to build that momentum, increasing behaviors that we want to see. So it, uh, it addresses reducing inappropriate behaviors as well as increasing behaviors that we want to encourage. A high probability command sequence is the practical application of behavioral momentum theory in which a client is given a less preferred task but before they're asked to engage in it they're given three highly preferred tasks or highly likely highly probable tasks for them to engage in so for example if the low probability task is writing a word or eating a, an unfamiliar food then the three um, highly probable tasks before that would be tasks along the same vein, so eating preferred foods or engaging in a, a drawing or writing activity that's easy for them. As they engage in those three to five easy tasks, it builds that momentum to the point that you can then request the low probability task and they will comply without engaging in inappropriate or problematic behavior. A high probability command sequence can be used in a variety of settings. It can be used to derail an inappropriate or maladaptive behavior and begin the change into a redirected, more positive behavior. However, it is most effective when used as an antecedent strategy. Um, this requires knowing one's clients, knowing what activities are likely to set off inappropriate or maladaptive behaviors, and with that foresight, knowing going into it that they're going to engage in that behavior to first of all use a, a string of high probability commands. Uh, this ensures their compliance and builds up that behavioral momentum and then circumvents the entire issue of an inappropriate behavior from even happening in the first place. Okay, Devin, I have right here a plate of cheese just for you but we don't get to eat it until after we've eaten some apples. So take a bite of apple. Let's try this again. Devin, touch your nose. Touch your nose. Oh, good job touching your nose. Thank you. Touch your ears. Oh, high five. That was such good touching your ears. Good job. Oh, touch your hair. Oh, yeah. Awesome work, Devin. Take a bite of apple. Look at that bite you took. I am so proud of you eating your apple. You can have some cheese. Yum. Do you want more cheese? Okay, first we need to take a bite of apple. Do this. Good job, Devin. Do this. Good copying. Thank you. Do this. That was so great. Awesome job. Take a bite of apple. And here's a piece of cheese for eating your apple. Thank you so much. That was great.